drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to my last video of 2023. Within this video we'll be looking back at this year and also forward to what we can expect in 2024. This video covers this from my channel's perspective and also from a product perspective from key homebrewing companies worldwide. I hope you all agree that this is a great way to finish off the year and thank you all for your kind appreciation of my channel. So let's get started. During the year of 2023 I released a total of 48 videos excluding this one. This broke down as 10 new recipe guides, 18 that were product related, 12 educational focus videos and 8 interviews. It has certainly been a busy year in all areas and the interview content was something new for the channel this year. Here is a look at the 10 different recipe videos that I shared during this year. Here I had two lagers and one porter that uses lager yeast, two different pale ales and one IPA, one pastry stout, one saison and one mango ale. This was then finished off with a double bock which is this year's Christmas beer. I have to say that I am happy with the variety of different types of beer on offer here and it is my hope that people will discover a liking for new styles outside of the mainstay of just lagers and hobby beers. Do let myself and the community know which of these 10 was your favourite within the comments section of this video and also which styles you would like me to create recipes for in 2024. I hold great value to your feedback and would really appreciate your input. I held a poll within my channel's Facebook group for members' favourite recipe of the year and here are the top three results. The most popular being the Verdant Tropical Pale Ale with the Juicy and Hazy Pale Ale and Verdant West Coast IPA coming in at a joint second place. My personal favourite recipe of 2023 was the Summer Baltic Porter. I guess what this really comes down to though for most is their favourite types of styles and mine are personally stouts and porters though I would struggle to tell you a beer style that I do not like when done well. In terms of products covered in 2023, I had 18 different videos covering from yeast to two different pressure fermentation vessels. I could have easily doubled the amount of different products covered this year, but as per usual chose to be selective about what I cover, and my ideal goal is that products are only a third of my total videos for the year, which I was close to reaching but not quite this year due to the amount of really great things to cover. For an insight into some of the new products we expect in 2024, stay tuned as this is coming a little later in this video. Let's now look at, in my opinion, the most notable highlights of the products I covered this year. 2023 was certainly a great yeast year for homebrewers with Nova Lager finally making it into sachet format and for the first time multi-strain kveik was made available in the commercial clean form for homebrewers and breweries. There is simply no other homebrew product company working harder to release new products than Kekland in recent years and once again they dominated with a large amount of new releases again this year. My favourites being the two new wraps products that totally changed the technology available for both brewing and fermentation within the homebrew market. In terms of stainless steel unit tanks with pressure capabilities both Brewbill and Brewtools gave us very different offerings in 2023. Brutals had a new vision with ways to wall mount and floor mount a variety of different tank sizes from large to small, whereas the X2 range stayed within the more traditional track. Both products saw additional upgrades and I covered these in update videos too. Sadly the X2 was delayed in coming into Europe this year, but thankfully you can expect it in the early 2024. During 2023 I provided 12 videos that were educational. Topics ranged from differences between no sparge and sparge brewing through to refractometer accuracy testing for different warts. However these 12 videos for the year are for this kind of content. This is down on previous years and this is something I would like to address on a greater scale in 2024. The trouble being that in the many years that I have been sharing on YouTube I have already covered a great deal of educational themes. So I would really appreciate some feedback and suggestions here for new topics that I can cover. Something totally new this year for the channel was the inclusion of interviews and I was very happy to manage to get interviews with some of the industry's top talent. I would like to do more of these in 2024 and have recently invested in some wireless microphones to improve the quality further. If you have any thoughts and suggestions here then please let me know. As much as these videos in this category do not, do not get masses of views, I know that many of you really appreciated and enjoyed these. 
Let's now start looking forward to 2024 with some new products in no particular order. Certainly 2023 was a very good year for homebrewers, but 2024 could well top it. Let's begin with Omega Yeast Labs, who will be looking to apply their discoveries around the haze gene HZY1. Omega have been working on removing haze from traditionally hazy strains and adding haze to traditionally non-hazy strains of yeast. In the hazy beer realm specifically, this will give brewers more yeast options for hazy styles. The vast majority of brewers are using versions of the same strain to make hazy IPA, and the result is that a lot of hazy IPAs taste the same. Different strain options will help brewers to differentiate their hazy IPAs with different ester profiles and attenuation levels to name just two areas. In one application of their research on haze, the image shown on screen shows two beers with the exact same recipe and yeast, except the clear one received an extra dry hop at the same time as the yeast was pitched. Brutals, the premium brand from Norway, have a very interesting product range destined for 2024 that is aimed to complement most prosumer and professional fermentation tanks. This is known as the Brutals Fermentation Control System at this point and offers control of not only heating and cooling but also CO2 in and out with the capability of stirring being added via another accessory. The system has a 5 inch IPS display with a separate wall mounted input output module. This is all connected up to the internet of course for remote control logging and monitoring. Within this display you can also view measurements for temperature, specific gravity levels and also power consumption. There are spare ports available with future upgrades and accessories in mind, plus sensors and valves will be available with many different configurations, so that in true Brutal's modular style, you can set things up your own custom way. Kegland, as always, has more than just a few products planned for release, and 2024 will certainly not be any different. I was able to catch up with Key from Kegland at a very recent trade event, and I filmed him alongside a number of great new products so that you can get all of the details directly from him. So let's get started. Hey Key, nice to see you again. Hey David. Uh, so we're going to talk about some of the products that you've got coming for 2024. Yep. Um, so I see that you're right in front of or beside the uh, Brusilla 100 litre. Yep. Um, it's a massive system, really good to see. Um, can you give us a little bit about the basics of this, the power, uh, yep. the, um, you know, the volume that you can do, uh, yep. how much would it come out to the fermenter? Yep. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Well, uh, obviously it's a 100 litre brewery, so uh, that's a 100 litre pretty much to the top. It's basically 100 litres pretty much to about here, so a little bit of headspace, but look, comfortably, I reckon if you're doing sort of like 80, 90 litres in that range, um, it's about right for, uh, for that size batch. We have made a few upgrades. A lot of the things in this unit are very similar to the 65 and 35. Great. Obviously, the center drain is an important one, so it's really easy to clean. You can CIP it and drain it out without having to tip it upside down. When you get to this size as well, the center drain really starts to, to, to uh, notice how handy it is because it's a bit heavier to lift this unit up. Yeah, um, yeah. You'd need, you'd, need a, you'd need something to lift that basket, wouldn't you, really? Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely. This is also the type of brewery where you really want to be thinking about having the pulley hoist as well because the basket's starting to get a bit heavy um, yeah. when you lift it up. We've got this sort of uh, lifting hook here. We changed the design a little bit to sort of make it interlock with the, uh, the pulley a little bit better as well on this one. Uh, we did also make some changes recently where we're starting to put in PPSU sight glasses on here. Something we haven't done in the past. I know a lot of people use glass or polycarbonate, but we didn't really want to do that because they're either easy to break and polycarbonate contains BPA. Uh, so that's something which is a nice little upgrade. Um, look, a lot of the features are similar. Uh, with the electrical uh, unit, uh, we basically have 6.6 uh, .6 kilowatts of power. So it's really powerful. This is actually the brewery I use at home. And even when I'm using it for small batches, I love it because uh, the malt pipe fits, you know, quite low down into the boiler. And so how way, small can you go batch size wise? Oh, you can easily do like a 20 litre batch in this. So, right. you know, because the malt pipe sits quite low, um, then you do a 20 litre batch and look, it heats up instantly with those small batch sizes. It's the other reason I love it, even though sometimes I'm only doing 50 litres, the fact that I've got 6.6 .6 kilowatts, you know, at, at, at my disposal, it just sort of ramps up, you know, instantly and... I don't know, these days I'm so busy with other stuff, sure. having that power just means yeah. I can brew faster yeah. and, and knock a batch out real quick. So Amazing. that's what I love about it. We've Great. also got a lot of accessories like the distillation lid. Yeah, that one's one, 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 one that will come in uh, soon. We've also got some cool new stills which are 
sort of uh, coming in shortly, uh, which fit onto the, uh, the larger lid. And we've changed some of the lid clamps as well. So basically starting to go with these adjustable lid clamps. This sort of gives you a little bit of adjustment so you can clamp the lid down a bit tighter depending on what you're doing. Yeah. Because we bring out more and more accessories with these things. Having yeah. an adjustable lid clamp just sort of opens up more opportunity for us to do stuff down the track as well. So you'll have the same types of accessories for the 100 litre that you have for the 65 and the 35? Yeah, we're actually doing some upgrades there as well. So it's still the Gen 4, but there might be a Gen 4.1 or something when we switch to the PPSU sight glasses, because these will have graduations right. basically right. on the sides of the sight glass and things like that. So. Um, yeah, we're constantly looking at ways, David, to sure, you know, keep sure. upgrading them and, and make them easier to use, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, that, that, that's definitely a big system for sure. Yeah. Oh, I should also mention with the power, some people get a bit concerned if they see 32 amp single phase, but you can use it single phase or three phase. It's really easy to switch between the two wiring configurations. So um, literally to switch across, you just pull out a few uh, terminal joiners and then um, switch over to the uh, three phase cable if you want to do three phase 10 amp instead of single phase 32 amp. So really, really easy to go between the two. Great. Yeah. Right, so I see that you've also got a smaller Oxybar keg. Um, I know these have been really popular during uh, the course of 2023, um, but definitely there's been a call for something smaller. Yep. Um, so on the right, you've got the eight liter. Um, tell us about the smaller one there. What size is it? Yeah, so more or less the, the, this one, it has the same diameter, but obviously it's a little bit shorter. Um, we're basically uh, using very similar technology in this one. So we're using the same uh, basically nylon barrier blend uh, in the PET wall. So that basically helps with the oxygen transmission through the plastic itself, uh, greatly reduces that. Look, it's a really handy size and it's a fairly low cost keg as well. And we're it's actually, four litres, right? Yeah, that's right. So yeah, it's four litres yeah. in size, so half the size of the eight litre. Um, and just a great size for fitting into like a little cooler or esky. We also have some neoprene jackets, which are coming out. Look, I also use this with uh, another product. We've got Nucatat Mini and use this as a little takeaway keg. We've been selling in Australia for a little while now and they've been going, they've been basically flying off the shelf, hard, have been hard to keep in stock. Um, but we are ramping up produ production significantly. So we're gonna start shipping these out overseas. So we'll see them all around Europe and, and the States shortly as well. Okay, Look, great. I think it's also a fantastic product for little small bench top dispensers. Like I've got the Benchy uh, sure. bench top chiller, which is also gonna be coming out next year. So very excited to see that because this product and that product really work well hand in hand. And I think for also a lot of uh, brewers that are getting into the hobby, sometimes that cost of the you know stainless steel kegs is a bit prohibitive to get into it. Sure. And these things give people that access to sort of jump in, into it. And also people doing small batches and stuff like that these days, 10 litre batch sure. is not uncommon. Sure. So you know I think these types of kegs really kind of like work well with that type of thing. I think personally, they, they, you know, they come in at a price point that makes it very easy to just give it to a friend. Yeah. And not have to worry about when you get it back. Yeah, you definitely. Know, you wouldn't do that with, yeah. the, with stainless steel keg. For yeah, sure. as much as I love my mates and everything, like sometimes when they give my stuff back, uh, it doesn't come back so yeah. quickly. So, yeah. you know, yeah, when you're sort of giving them something like this with your beer in it, the last thing you want to do when you're giving beer to a friend is have to go through that painstaking process yeah. of packaging every single one. Like Absolutely. Whether you bottle or can it up, it's a bit of a pain. So, like, it's a great size. You just want to give four litres to a friend for a party or something like that. You know, I think it's really handy in that respect. So have you got anything bigger? Uh, we do, actually. Yeah, we've yeah. got these uh, 20 litres also. Uh, oh, wow. they're, they're actually just <laughs> about to arrive in Australia and they'll very shortly start getting shipped overseas. All of these three have some similar features in the sense it's got the dip tube with the cage on the end. So yep. it sort of filters uh, the beer. So we sometimes, look, generally in a keg, we don't recommend dry hopping, but sometimes a little bit of hot particles or something like that, which have come in from the fermentation process. So nice to be able to also filter them out so don't, don't get stuck in the poppets and stuff like that too. So great. Yeah, but great. Uh, look, a really handy small little keg and uh, one that won't break, break the bank. Great. Right. Well, it certainly looks like 2024 is going to be a busy one. Um, and you've got something else in your hand there, Key. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, that's right. Well, this is our cannula can filler. Obviously, a lot of people are familiar with the cannula brand for the canning machines, the benchtop canners. Sure. Because they're now the highest selling uh, canning machine in the world. But with respect to um, can filling, we haven't really had a lot of options in the past. But this particular device makes it really handy to fill up cans fairly quickly. You can also do bottles as well and a wide range of bottles. It's quite adjustable in the sense that like at the moment, for instance, I've got it set up for the 500 ml can. So you just drop it in there like that and then fill the can. 
but you can also uh, undo these little wing nuts on the side and then basically pull out the base like this. So you can even do something as tall as like say, uh, you know, champagne bottles or something like oh, that. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, same with these tubes, these can basically uh, basically fit up to any height. So if you've got a champagne bottle, you'll be pushing it down to the bottom like so. Um, this device uh, also has ball lock connectors on the top here. So typically, if you're gonna use it, you would bolt this to the wall and you'd put basically your uh, gas into this red post here and then you'd put your beer into the liquid post. How this differs from other ones on the market is firstly, we've got a little screen, makes it really easy to set up and calibrate. So a small OLED screen here. So if you wanted to switch between different profiles, let's say you're doing a 500 mil can or you're doing like a 330 mil or switching to a champagne bottle or something like that, it's as simple as just pressing the button choosing the profile you're after for that particular uh, product and then hitting go and that's it. So each time you fill, you just hit the button once you're in the profile, it'll purge the can out, then fill it. This is not a counter pressure device. And look, for canning, generally most people canning, even on a professional scale, aren't usually using counter pressure. And it's not really necessary. The whole idea of canning is you're capping on foam anyway. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the other really cool feature about this is we have an integrated uh, pinch valve. So. On the side here, this is what controls the flow of the beer. So basically you've got this solenoid, which basically it's kind of pinching this tube. Now, the reason why I've put that on the external of the machine is to make this really sanitary because obviously right, right at that final point when you're filling up cans, you want to make sure the whole process is sanitary as possible. Um, and when you're washing it out, it's really simple as well because of that. So let's say I wanted to clean it out after a day of, uh, of can filling, just undo this post here. That beer line just comes out like this and to release it, I just pull the beer line out of the pinch valve like so. And then what I do is pull off this tube and I literally just chuck that whole liquid side of the unit into the dishwasher. So oh, none of the liquid's really passing nice. into yeah. the machine cavity itself. Yeah. So that's a really nice feature to uh, you know clean up, clean up after a day because there's nothing worse than you know, doing a canning run and just adding another job of, you know, cleaning down the track and have yeah. to sort of, sort of yeah. kind of open I, up the machine I, I guess or whatever. you know you're a home brewer when everything you look at, you think, how am I going to clean that? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. And however, all the stuff we design, we're always thinking, how are we going to use it? Because, uh, you know, obviously we use all this gear ourselves. Sure. And that's something that I just hate more, more, more cleaning jobs that I have to do around. So the place. other thing was, I saw that you've got the wrapped logo on there. Yep. Um, how, how does that uh, fit with the wrap system exactly? Yeah, so this also uh, reports back up to the wrap portal. So whenever you're doing a fill, it'll basically send the data up to the wrap portal and you know tell you how many fills you've done, the speed of the fill. So sort of, uh, I think we've got a CPS, so cans per minute sort of number, which feeds up to the wrap portal. Yeah. So if you're sort of interested to keep track of it, to be honest with you- So look, you can I, save your settings as well? You can save your settings. That's probably yeah. the main thing. Yeah. Look, yeah. I don't think yeah. feeding your can filling days up to the web is like super exciting, to be honest with you. It's just filling up cans. But one thing that does make it easier is when you're putting all the different profiles to use a full-size key yeah, on a desktop absolutely. to key in all the yeah. different bottle types and stuff like that. Because obviously if you want to save, you know, 330 mil can or something like that, typing it all yeah. in on a tiny little screen like this is a bit tricky. So the syncing does help in that respect. Yeah, that's very handy because you can then just basically get started, right? Yes, exactly. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, it also means we can do the uh, firmware updates later on. So a few other features we bring out on this and they'll be backwards compatible to other, other units too. So we're constantly looking at firmware upgrades. Um, so, you know, having something connects to the internet just makes it so easy to keep everything up to date. Yeah, okay. So, Key, I see that you have another type of uh, wrapped controller here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and why people might want to look towards this? Yeah, sure. Well, a lot of you guys will be familiar with our temperature controller, which will have like a blue and a red cable coming out the bottom so you can do heating and cooling. But we did feel that there was a need for us to also have a glycol controller. At the moment, all of the glycol chillers, generally people are having the smarts in the actual um, or the temp controller in the glycol control unit, like a G20 or G40, for instance, right. where they would set the temperature. But it does make it a bit complicated because then you've got wires running back um, as well as the glycol. Because let's say you want to do heating and cooling, you've got one temperature controller, you know, over near the glycol unit, but then you need to run potentially, you know, AC or DC wiring to some heating device or something like that. Sure. The other thing was, it really is kind of nice if you've got a kind of a heads up display right on the tank itself. So in the future, what we'd like to do is start designing the tanks, which can take this directly onto the front of the tank. That way you've got a screen showing the temperature of that particular tank. And then you've got a device which can do the heating and cooling on the tank itself. The right. other thing is by putting a temp and glycol controller on the tank, this can also pick up on things like the pill. So if you've got a pill inside the fermenter, 
the most efficient way to use the pill and most reliable way, in my opinion, is in Bluetooth mode. Um, but, you know, if you've got, um, you know, a heating or cooling device a long way away, it's a bit of a struggle to get through a stainless steel, you know, tank like this and get up to the internet or get up to another device to yes. read but yes. having this directly on the front of the tank makes it really way easy. It gives you good Yeah, nice signal. and close. Yeah, mm. really close. Mm. And it also means, yeah, with the pill in Bluetooth, it's giving a Bluetooth signal to this. And then the uh, wrapped temp and glycol controller is then doing the heavy lifting up to the internet, getting that signal up to the internet as well. So, but essentially it's a, it's a totally new device. We'll see nothing like this yet. We're using a, a servo pinch valve. Because it's servo as well, we can gradually close the uh, pinch down on this tube to shut shut off the flow. So I can go all the way from completely off where it's completely closed down. And essentially this tube is pushing all the way through this valve like that. So it's very sanitary. There's no sort of threads or anything like that in any of the right. any of the servo pinch valve. It's literally just a tube that pushes through like that. And then when it activates, it closes down. Now the beauty about closing down and pinching on the tube like this is it also gives us the ability to have uh, PID control. Now look, there's a lot of PID control in home brewing. People brag about and stuff like that. Yeah. Many instances, <laughs> I think a lot of it's not really that necessary. Sure. But you do find with glycol jackets in particular, because you've got often like negative one degree gl glycol in the chiller, if you pump a bit too much glycol through that jacket and it's a bit too slow to shut a valve down, you can really overshoot because the thermal mass of that glycol in the jacket is substantial. Yeah. And it can overshoot the temperature, especially on these smaller tanks. That I, I guess we've get. all seen that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, so sure. being able to have PID control on the cooling side is also really handy for this kind of device. Now, of course, that's the glycol side of it. So for instance, let's say you've got a tank with glycol ports here. You'd come out of here and essentially be you know, running through the glycol port here. It doesn't really matter if it's the inlet or outlet, both will work. And then you've got the heating outlet, like our uh, wrap temp controller, this heating outlet will allow you to plug something in. So you can basically um, get this red, uh, you know, AC socket, plug your heating device, could be a wrap or a belt or, you know, anything you got really, put that on the tank and away you go. So you've got like a heads up display, you've got something that relays the signal and something that does both the heating and cooling all in one unit right on the tank. So look, wow. I think it's going to be yeah. a much better way to do it. In yeah, my well, that, that's, that's certainly more solutions in a box than I thought it would be. So yeah, really looking forward to seeing this in 2024. Yeah, definitely. I think it'd be really cool. Great. Well, thanks, Keith. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, so I see that you also have this uh, benchy bench top kegerator. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's right. So obviously the benchy name, we've mainly been doing other types of inline dispensers. But this is the first one where we're actually making a small, basically it's entire kegerator which sits on the bench top. So you can put your kegs inside, that way they stay cold. It's perfectly sized basically for these four litre uh, Oxybar uh, four litre kegs. Uh, you can also use stainless steel mini kegs too. So if you have the five litre mini kegs, for instance, they'll also fit in here with the tapping head. So good option for that. It's also another product we're using the new Nucatap minis. So on the front of this unit, it'll have two Nucatap minis like that. So they're the same taps we've already released some time ago. Um, another thing is, this is also a wrapped product. So I'll link up to the uh, wrap platform. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because we have two little screens above the taps to show what's on tap on the left and right hand side. So let's say you've got, you know, wine on tap for the wife or something like that. You can literally just go on the phone. You can uh, say I've got wine on the right hand tap. And then as long as this is connected to your local Wi-Fi, it will basically update on the screen so you can see that. So you've got like, you know, a New England IPA and maybe a wine or something or even carbonated water, for instance. So you can have a couple different beverages in there. We'll start putting up a few uh, cocktail recipes and stuff like that. If people want to put like an espresso martini on tap or something like that too. Awesome. Um, we do have a number of accessories for the Nucatap Mini, for instance, like the uh, nitro spout. So they can be kind of cool for some, uh, you know, cold brew coffee, for instance, on a little bench top kegger would be kind of handy as well. But this is a product which will come out next year in 2024. So keep your eyes open for this one. Brilliant. So anything else to mention? I mean, it's a hell of a lot of products, Key. Yep. Um, but anything else to mention that people can expect in 2024? Yeah, we're doing a uh, we've been doing a lot of work on the wrap platform in general to sort of simplify it, make it easier to use, but also uh, make it sort of work better on a mobile phone. So we're constantly doing work on that side to uh, you know really enhance the whole platform. Look, there's other stuff too. There's got uh, we've got new, the Nucatap FCs. We've made a major change internally to those. Uh, we've got new uh, Mark V regulators that are coming out. We've got some cool new features there. 
But um, I know you want to keep this video short, David, so I'm not going to get too stuck into every single thing that's coming up. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to say something. But again, a time. great uh, product yeah. year for the home brewers from Kegland. Yeah, definitely. There's heaps Fantastic. of stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, well, heaps thanks stuff very much, Keith. Yeah, appreciate no it. Cheers. All thanks, right. David. So there you have it, plenty of great new products coming in 2024 for home brewers. Many thanks to you all for your continued viewership and support for the channel this year. It certainly means a great deal to me. It is always great for me to be able to help with any questions you may have, be it through a video or the comments section on YouTube or the channel's Facebook group. I do love meeting my viewers out in public, be it at supermarkets or at one of the various brewing events I attend during the course of the year. So if you do see me out in the public, then do feel very welcome to come over for a chat. I especially appreciate the support given by those that are able to either purchase items from my Teespring store, or give a super thanks on YouTube. This essentially allows me to continue improving the channel's quality, and to fund new items for the channel of various different types. I never take money out for my own use, it simply goes back in, and usually each year I add some of my own money too. YouTube for me is part of my hobby of passion for all things beer and brewing, not a business, and I hope this shines through. I hope you all have a very good end of year, no matter how you celebrate it, and look forward to sharing my first video of 2024 with you all in early January. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative, and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!